Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new episode of the OC Show. This is Tim. My name is Peter. Um, first things first, there's going to be a Q and A. Yes. So, like as usual, your Q and A would be next Sunday, so Sunday the 12th at the 9 p.m. Eastern time on Twitch. So, you guys, if you have any questions about what we are going to talk about today or other things you would like to discuss, just join us on Twitch. Yes, for sure. First things first, um, another Rookie Rumble finished, so we have to talk about that. Uh, the, the, the Rookie Rumble was won by Saber Rider from Germany. Um, second place was Brailflex from Costa Rica, and then fourth place went to a uh, M M A O F R from France. <laughs> M A O F R. I think that's that's how we pronounce it. <laughs> we made a full announcement in another video that you can click um, s somewhere in the video. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure where it's gonna. The link is gonna be appearing. Uh, but yeah, check that link out. And as a rookie rumble ends, another one starts, and that's the rookie rumble number 20. It's gonna run until July 25th, and like the previous rookie rumble, XT UHW Prime and GPU Pi. So if you guys uh, hadn't the chance to participate on the other one, or if you are still a rookie, it's always a good idea to participate and get a few OC esports uh, esports points. Yeah, there's about 50 points to earn for the OC esports ranking, so I think that's always a good deal. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, like you were saying, a competition ended. That was not the only one. The Novice Nimble number two also ended um, this weekend, actually, on July 6th. And uh, here we had the chance to see Cockatland again, again, winning the, um, the Novice Nimble, was, uh, followed by the Hellas OC team and uh, OCN. So Cockatland scoring 227 points, the Hellas OC team 213, and OCN 167. That's a whole bunch of points. Yeah, yeah pretty cool. So, again, another uh, Novice Nimble starts as well when, when the previous one finishes. But no cooldown, right? No cooldown between, between the two rounds. Um, usually there is one week between two Novice Nimbles, but we had an issue where one competition <laughs> was extended <laughs> one more week. So <laughs> <laughs> that's how it goes. We just move back straight into the rhythm and forget about the one week cooldown. So the new Novice Nimble has uh, new benchmarks again. There is a, there's a HW Prime, there's CPU-Z free frequency for AMD, there's a, there's a 3D Mark Fire Strike with NVIDIA graphics cards, there's a Vantage Performance with AMD, AMD graphics cards, um, and of course a 4.5 GHz low clock XTU challenge. Yeah. Don't forget that this Novice Nimble is a team competition, so we average out the, the, the three best submissions per team in a, in a stage, and that's how you get points. Yeah, and right now currently in the lead, Cogatland again in the lead. So guys, this is the team to attack. HW uh, uh, Hardware.info, sorry, which is second, and the Hardware Ready OC official team, which is a team from Italy. So always yeah. cool to see some new teams in the top three. Cogatland is doing extremely well. I think they're overall second on the OC esports team ranking as well. Yeah, it's a very popular team for rookies as well within France. So which explains why there's a lot of novices coming out of that team as well. Yeah. If you're French and you want to learn and meet up with other overclockers online, it, check out the forums of Cogatland. It's yeah. very, very active. So another competition, which is uh, which actually we already talked about uh, two weeks ago, which is the ROG OC Showdown Formula um, Round 2. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this one is a competition by Asus ROG, and you have a lot of cool things to win if you're in the top three, depending on which league you are in. So there's prizes for different leagues. And there's also some giveaways uh, for people that participate in all three stages. There's already 95 overclockers participating, so this competition is getting quite popular. Yeah, so it's going to take a, take a while to, to get to the first uh, spot, I suppose. Currently leading is Jab383 from the US, mm -hmm. uh, trailing uh, or trailed by Nick from Germany and Vadim UA from Ukraine. Okay, well. So quite the international company there. And the stages are XTU, yeah. GPU Pi, and HW Prime. Note that the XTU stage, there's a little bit less points to be earned because the limitations are very open. You don't need to have a system picture or a screenshot. So yeah. it's only five points for winning for winning the XTU stage, whereas 25 points in the two other stages where you have to give full-blown verification with a picture and a screenshot and everything you need to... Well, check out the competition page for all the rules. I'm not going to list them up here. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we've we talked already about that in the OC show live Q&A last week when uh, Truthman was not here. And uh, basically, AMD launched, uh, launched a new series of GPUs. Some, of, some were more refreshed than others. And uh, among those that were new ones were the, the Fury X. Yeah, so the Fury X is a new top-of-the-line AMD graphics card. And... 
for overclockers, the, the 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 key point would be okay. How are these cards performing when you really try to push it to the to the very limit? Mm -hmm. And AMD announced on their uh, gaming show at E3 that these cards would be highly overclockable. And right now, we're not right. We're not quite seeing that yet. So you have a you have a couple of overclockers from around the world trying out how to overclock the Fury Xs and. So far, the core frequency will be pushed or could be pushed around uh, 1,160 megahertz, which is a 10% gain. And the HPM memory is, is even stranger. It's running st at stock 500 megahertz, and people claim that they can overclock them to 600 or even 650 megahertz before they get artifacts. But AMD said they, they actually cannot. it cannot be overclocked. There's no way to access the HPM frequency. So. I'm not sure what's what's happening there. Uh, we saw one uh, comment on Facebook by Cool Eyes, who works for ASUS, and he was saying that there is a lot of headroom in the Fury cards or the Fury GPU. So he's apparently, or he has more inside information on how, on how the cards overclock. Um, so far, I think it's wait and see. Yeah, so far it's wait and see, and I suppose it's probably uh, probably related to the strategy AMD usually. <clears throat> has for GPUs, right? So basically, just not releasing at the maximum clocks and leaving a bit of room for you know a later reference of the same card, pretty much. No idea. Wait and see. see. Okay. Uh, talking about reviews, since we are uh, mentioning graphics cards, talking about modern boards, uh, Hardware.info in the Netherlands uh, published a pretty cool review where they are comparing um, on the LN2 the top end Z97 motherboards. So they, uh, they analyzed the Gigabyte uh, Z97X OC4s, the ASRock Z97 OC formula, the MSI Z97 X Power AC, mm -hmm. and the um, ASUS Maximus uh, 7G. So they compared all three boards. Uh, sadly, they didn't have enough time to uh, push the cards really hard to um, basically, you know, to have a, a better view of uh, how the different cards behave on the LN2 and the a long time of stress, but it gives a kind of a good idea, and it seems the the Gigabyte boards and the MSI ones are at the top. But score-wise, the ASRock one performed as good as those cards. So yeah, I think the the main the key point in the article about the ASRock motherboards is that even though they could get the scores, it took them a, a, a while longer to mm. actually get there, and there was no software in NXP. So that's yeah. probably what what. The reason why they say okay, the Gigabyte and MSI are slightly better. Yeah. They didn't finish off with the with the ASUS motherboard. I think they ran out of. Yeah, M2. ran out of them too. Yeah. But it's always good to see a comparison between these motherboards and hear what um, the professional overclockers have to say about the the, the the behavior under liquid nitrogen. True, true, true. So talking about LN2 and moving on to someone that actually tried something very new in the community and it's 0.0, .0 I think that's how we pronounce his nickname. So 0.0, .0 is a Thai overclocker and he likes to play with bias microcodes and things like that. Yeah, This is a pretty interesting story and we've seen it unfold over the past week where at first, I actually I saw this happen. I saw this thread in our staff forums mm -hmm. where we were looking at a an, an, an overclocking result of a mobile Haswell CPU that was actually locked. It's a Core i7 4600M, which is a dual core i7 yeah. with mobile hybrid Haswell, threading. Yeah. A mobile Haswell, yeah. So. Uh, 0, 0.0 overclocked it to, I think, 4.7 gigahertz, and everyone was asking, okay, what's going on? <laughs> because this CPU is supposed to be locked. As it turns out, there is a very old microcode that Intel issued at the very, very beginning of the launch of Haswell that um, allows mobile chips or mobile lock chips to be, uh, to be overclocked. Mm -hmm. um, to make it very, very simple, the way you overclock on Intel CPUs is usually by increasing the turbo ratio. So Intel have a, has a, they have a stock frequency on a stock uh, ratio, and everything above that is called turbo bins. Now, on lock CPUs, Intel will lock the registers for those turbo bins, so you cannot exceed them. There's, mm -hmm. there's a logic that says, okay, the maximum turbo bin that, you can, that can, you, you can use for this CPU is, for example, 45 or 46 or any, any value that they, um, that they basically give with the CPU, right? Yep. So with this old microcode, none of this logic actually was working. So you can overclock to a point far beyond the top uh, turbo bin that's by stock given by Intel. So 
So he got, got the first place in uh, dual core XTU. Global That's first place. Global yeah. first place. 166 points for his uh, his Core i7 4600M clocked at 4.7 or 4.8 gigahertz yeah. through the XTU. And he went until 4.9 just CPU Z validation. So. Yeah. So that le this leads up like a couple of you know speculations. One is someone going to get a notebook to then open up and put LN2 on, under it. Like we, we might see 650 XTU, maybe even 700 XTU points for, a, for, for this dual core. Yeah. That might be very cool. And two, can this microcode also be applied to the, to the, the desktop as well? Mm -hmm. That would be very interesting. And I, I, I honestly, I doubt it because it yeah. might just be a bug that is specifically for, for the mobile chip? for the mobile chips. Oh, okay. Um, but it really, it's it's up to it's up to the the power users to to figure out how far they can take this this new BIOS trick. Yeah. Also, we'll see how the motherboards among those laptops react because usually motherboards for laptops are not really designed to power so much. So. Yeah, I think you'll have to. Well, you can always <laughs> you e have to it. A bit, yeah. You can always e-power it. We've seen that with um, with the Raspberry, Raspberry Pi. Pi yeah. So, oh, that's going to be quite interesting. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So that's about it for today's show. It was, yeah. It was, yeah. Uh, so we'll see you guys uh, on Sunday, Sunday 12th. Uh, don't forget on the Twitch slash uh, Twitch TV slash Overclocking TV uh, channel, and uh, we'll be here. Peter, you will be here. I'm not sure what the audience wants. Okay, well, you guys vote up if you want Peter to be there and vote down if you don't want him to be there. And, um, and yeah, so we'll be there talk, taking your questions. So if you guys have any questions, just join us. And until then, don't forget, keep pushing it.